This video starts our introduction to statistics. Statistics is the collection, organization, and interpretation of data. There are two types of statistics, descriptive and inferential. Descriptive statistics is the gathering and organization of statistics. The statistics can be quantitative, meaning numeric, or qualitative, meaning a word description, like color, gender, rating, etc. Inferential statistics uses the data to make predictions based on the information gathered. Probability and statistics are closely tied branches of mathematics. Don't let the difference confuse you. In probability, we think about what might happen. In statistics, we look at what did happen. Let's talk about who uses statistics. Um, insurance companies, and that would be for life insurance, health insurance, travel, house, car, business. Um, it's a little slow here. Voter turnout in U.S. presidential elections. We look at numbers and try to make predictions. So that definitely says political polls, news um, organizations definitely look at statistics. Um, here it says the practice of sickness, which means we're looking at this for medicine, and not only medicine to say how much do things cost, but also how many people are sick, what do they have in common, right? Trying to tie some things together by looking at numbers to determine what should happen. Um, house sales, stock markets, right? When we're looking at um, how many houses sold, what was the price they had, um, did the price go up, did it go down? If we look at stock market to see where there increases, decreases, what's going on with that, so we're collecting data. Um, here are sports. Um, anybody that's really into sports knows that when you're watching any kind of sports thing, they like to talk about that's the farthest throw of the season, the farthest throw of the first half of the game, right? They, they tell you the longest kick, um, and they don't tell you just by game, by year, by season, by, by whatever, right? So sports people are obsessed with the numbers and telling you what's going on. All right. I would say definitely education cares about statistics, so I pulled this directly from um, HCC statistics just to show courses with the highest enrollment in a particular year that we care about. Do we have enough um, course availability? Do we have enough teachers teaching it? Um, do we need to throw more online, right? So there's lots of reasons we want to look at the numbers and make sure we're providing what we need for our student demand. So basically, as you can see, all jobs use statistics in some way. Also, um, which I just pulled this from the data of <clears throat> the Data Bureau of Labor Statistics, it shows when you look at all jobs and what the growth is, has been, and then you look at a statistician's job, there's more and more demand for statisticians in the future. Um, they also wrap names like data scientists in there, so the more that computers are involved, the more data we're collecting, the more we need statisticians to interpret and tell us useful things about the data. Um, as a society, we also love data. So I threw a picture of a smartwatch on there to say we like to keep track of everything. I know I have one that does a fitness tracker, so I love to know how many steps did I take, how much, what was my heart rate like, right? So any kind of thing that you're keeping data on what you do on an individual basis, YouTube, how many times do we hear that um, a video went viral, right? So we're obsessed with data and how many hits something had, how many watches it had, um, how many retweets did something have. So we really like data as a society. So as we're looking at this data, we start finding more things within it. And so let's talk about populations and samples. A population uses all items of interest for a particular problem, kind of like the universal set that we talked about um, at the beginning of the semester. It is often difficult to collect data from all items in the population, so a subset of the population, which we call the sample, is used to represent the population. So I just made a little thing so you could compare. Population means everyone. Sample means some of the population. Much easier to get a sample than it is to get everyone to reply to something. So let's look at a few examples. In the presidential election, polls are used to try to determine which candidate will receive the most votes. Pollsters talk to a sample of people to, de to determine how they will vote. The polls hope to represent what will happen in the election, um, but how they select their sample affects the accuracy of the data compiled. Most of this unit uses samples to calculate values and organize data. There are many ways to select a sample. 
The hope is to produce a sample that is unbiased, meaning the sample reflects the ages, race, gender, religion, political parties, etc. of the population. Random samples are drawn in a way that all items in the population have an equally likely chance of being selected. This usually involves assigning numbers to all items in the population and then using a random number generator to decide which elements to include in the sample. Systematic sampling also involves numbering all items in the population and then selecting every nth item to be in the population. So say every tenth or every hundredth or every thousandth um, is the one that they would pick in the systematic. Cluster breaks the population into areas then random areas of the population are used to make a sample of the entire area. Stratified divides the population by characteristic, like age, gender, income, and then takes a random sample from the stratified group. Convenient sample is a sample that is easily obtained. Notice there's not a strategy to make the sample technique random. The lack of randomness can increase the bias of the sample selected and may not accurately reflect the entire population. So let's look at some examples and identify the sampling technique used in each example. So the first one, every 200th soda bottle produced at a production plant is weighed to assure the volume in the production is correct. Two, a student satisfaction survey is given at a college to determine areas of improvement needed in the student service department. All classes are numbered, then a random number generator determines the classes that will be given the survey. Three, to determine the average price of a house in the southeast of the U.S., random counties are selected from the state in question. The average price of each county is used to find the average price of the house in the southeast of the U.S. Four, gym members are categorized by age. A random sample from each group is surveyed to determine member satisfaction. And then five, the first 15 students to arrive to class are asked how well they can use a graphing calculator to determine how well students at the college can use the graphing calculator. All right, so let's look at our different kinds of sampling. So the first one, where we looked at every 200th bottle produced at a plant to assure the volume is correct, that would be systematic. In number two, where the student satisfaction survey is given at the college in areas of improvement, because we numbered the classes and then used a random number generator, that made that a random sampling. We can see three is cluster sampling because to determine the average price in the house of the southeast, we selected certain regions of the state. So the cluster, that region part, made it a cluster. In number four, because the gym members were categorized by age, that shows stratification, so we have stratified sampling. And then the last one, when we talked to the first 15 students to arrive at class, that was just convenient.